Okay, today is fun with capacitors day. Got assorted capacitors out here. I'm going to show how to test them, how to troubleshoot them, and so on. So let's start out with this thing. Now this is a start kit. It's got a potential relay on it. This is a, for a training unit. And it's got a start cap on it. So this would be a hard start kit for a train air conditioner or pump. If the capacitor that was suspect, we would need to test it. So I'm going to go through that procedure now and uh, you'll see how this works. Now I've removed the wires, these two wires off the capacitor. Now this is a start cap, so if this was recently taken off, you should short this thing out uh, like that. It's probably already uh, lost its charge because it bleeds through in this resistor. Now, and when it comes out of the circuit, it bleeds off the power. Uh, but just to be sure you can do that. And that's in deference to... Kung Fu Maintenance, who had a little problem with my run caps uh, and me not discharging them. And I agree, that's fine. Okay, now, while well, I'm going to test this thing, I have to take the resistor loose. If I don't take the resistor loose, it's not going to show me any kind of capacitance, it's just going to measure the resistance of the uh, resistor. So I put one on one side, one on the other, and it shows OL. Now what does that mean? Okay, it means that capacitor isn't any good. So I found a bad capacitor. Now oftentimes when you find these capacitors, uh, they'll actually work when they're shorted but they don't work right they'll usually burn up anyway uh, and there's a way to find out very probably if this thing has failed inside okay here's a close-up of this capacitor and you see this little hole right here that little hole and there's a cover that went over that hole and I knocked it kinda inside that thing has kind of blown out and so what's happening that's a uh, a relief valve or a relief hole anyway if pressure builds up inside of that thing that little piece that was in there should blow off and when it's blown off like that it means it's probably failed now here's another one, and you can see that that thing's intact. That does not mean this capacitor is good. They always have to be tested. But if you see this hole, and it's blown out, or there's tar around it, or some, sometimes these things will puke tar everywhere, uh, it's probably bad. Now, it could be bad because the capacitor went bad. It could be bad because the uh, unit was starting and stopping very quickly that will also take these out they're only made to be in the circuit about a half a second uh, and if you uh, had to turn that thing on several times in a row that could overheat this silly thing anyway this one's bad so I would have to replace this okay while we're on start caps I showed you this other one a little earlier and let's uh, put the probes on this one I got the same reading I got with the other one, don't I? So this one is like the other one is. It does not show the evidence of that blown out weak spot, the round thing. It looks pretty good, but this thing is open, so it's defective. Okay, here's another one. This is actually a start kit, kind of like that start kit I showed you before, but this uses a solid state relay inside. It's a Subco, I think SP66. I can't remember for sure. Anyway, I found this back in the junk pile. This is uh, well, a so-so start kit. 
you can actually install these. You put these two wires in across the run cap and this thing may make up for a compressor that's about to fail. Most of these compressors are not hard start. They don't use start caps on them. And when a compressor gets worn, sometimes uh, it, it will occasionally not start. And people will put these things in here, and I don't have a problem with them putting them in. Uh, they're not really a repair. They are more of a fix to get a little bit more time out of this unit until a compressor fails completely. It uses a solid state relay. In here is actually a thermistor that power runs through it. And this is a start cap right here, just like these other start caps were. And it shoots power into the start winding to give it a lot of start torque. Uh, and as it uh, time passes, which is maybe half a second, the thermistor warms up and takes it out of the circuit. But it's kind of a fix. It's not a real live repair. It's something that uh, I would do uh, just to get a little bit more time out of a compressor. Okay, here we have some other examples of run capacitors. Now, these old turkeys are laying out in the back 40, and I kind of dug these things out. And we'll see if any of them work. Now, this one here is actually new, so it's in pretty good shape. Let's take a quick look at this one. Now, if you look close, you can see that it says on it, 10 microfarads. Now you can just barely see that and also three, says 370 volts AC. So this should be a uh, 10 microfarads when I read it. So let's see if it actually is. Well, 10.6, it's okay, it's okay. If it's within 10%, it's fine. Okay. Now this, this thing here is a double cap. Now the newer ones are round and they're much, much smaller than this. And let's take a close look at this thing you can see it says C in the center, fan on the left, and herm on the right. Okay, this is a dual cap that is used in the HVAC uh, applications. There's actually two caps in here with one common. There is a small cap for the fan, because that's a smaller motor. And there is a large cap for the compressor which in this case they call Herm for Hermetic. So this is actually a dual cap. Uh, could be replaced by two separate caps if you wanted to. However, uh, if you can, I think I would replace this with a light part. Now this thing's kind of an old monster. These things are not anywhere near this big anymore. But if you look on this, it, it says 40 UF for microfarads and 5. So it is both a 5 microfarad and a 40 microfarad, and it's 440 VAC. Let me go over that 44, 440 VAC. Um, if it's a 440 VAC, that means I can put 440 volts to this thing. Now, we don't usually have 440 in these single phase units, and that's not the issue. These things run at about one and a half times the voltage of the uh, power coming in because it's back EMF and it stacks on top of the voltage that's coming in. So if I had 220 or say 240 coming into this thing, it's going to be about one and a half times that much. Uh, the end result of this is if you have a 440 VAC, replace it with a 440. If you have a 370 VAC, you can replace it with a 440 or a 370. 
I would actually re uh, recommend replacing light for light if I could. Okay, let's test this one and see if it's uh, if it's good. So one terminal goes in the column. Doesn't make any difference whether it's red or black. And then the other terminal goes here, and you can see back there it says 5.15. So that's uh, that's the fan. That's right, pretty close to where it should be. Then to test the other one, all I got to do is this, and we get 42, uh, 41 to 42, and that's okay. So that cap's good. Antique as it is, it still works fine. Okay, now we got this little bitty one. Now this thing here, caps are smaller than they used to be. This is 7.5 microfarads, plus or minus 6%. So it's telling you what the plus or minus uh, it can be. 370 volts AC. So let's see how this one stacks up. Okay, looks like we're at about 72 or 7.28. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit low, but it looks pretty good. So that one's good also. Now, last, we got this doohickey. Now, this thing. This is AMRAD, and they make two of these. They make a little one and a big one. These are multiple capacitors. And the center here is the common, that very centerpiece. Now we have a bunch of color coded uh, terminals, like this one here, it says 2.5 microfarads. 10 microfarads, 20 microfarads, 25 microfarads, 5 microfarads, or 6, and again, 5 or 4. Okay, so this could fit multiple capacitors or multiple applications. It also, now you notice if I was trying to use this one here, it would not work, would it? 40 and 5. I got the 5, but I don't have the 40, do I? Well, I could probably, and I could probably take a 20 and if I hook them in parallel, 20 and 10 would give me 30. Uh, and I suppose I could throw a couple of these fives in. And you could actually make this work. I'm not going to put all the wiring on this. This is kind of a, a nightmare. And there is uh, instructions with it. These are kind of cool because I could actually use this as a dual cap. Probably to replace that last cap I was looking at. Uh, the problem with these things is they're kind of grossly expensive and inventorying those things is going to be kind of a monster so I don't know it'd be nice to have one maybe the little one and the big one and we might be able to get ourselves out of a jam when we're off in the sticks but uh, that's capacitors start and run and how to check them out uh, remember, a capacitor is nothing but a battery. That's all it is. If I charge it up, it holds a charge. And it gives up the charge when I don't have any power running through the circuit. On an AC volts, we have that happening through the 60 cycles. I'm going to explain how these things work on another video with uh, in electric motors. However, they are batteries. Uh, 
and I'll probably do a little quickie here on how you test one of these if I didn't have a capacitor tester. 